Yeah. <laughs> So hello everybody in the Facebook world and soon to be at YouTube world too when I upload this video following. I've been pondering this so I thought what I would do is I would hop on and talk about idealized spirituality, divorcing humanity. It's a lot of it is but we're going to talk about uh, this kind of concept that has been just kind of percolating around my brain again. It's kind of been a thing lately. So I talked about tribe in my last blog post and the idea of uh, tribe had me kind of thinking around the idea of how we get into our heads, what spirituality should look like. And this is something I've talked about in the past. Hello, hello Maura, I love you too lady and hello to Victoria. And idealized spirituality, hey Robin, is something that keeps coming back on a little kind of little kind of circular theme for me and this is quite often about what we think things should look like versus what they do and then we kind of get into this negative pattern of giving up on something or devaluing something because it's not what it looked like and i think we actually divorce humanity from spirituality this way so I was thinking about this in terms of what we expect tribe to look like and what tribe means and that kind of, you know, that kind of discussion and kind of like pulling apart this idea. And I talked about uh, tribe in the blog post, like I said. So I was thinking I would make a video and talk a little bit more about that idea of uh, idealized spirituality and the harm it can do for us and I've talked about this in a number of different ways before but it's still it's still sitting with me particularly this month and I don't know if it's because it's January I don't know if it's because it's kind of like that that, that depressive month for me I don't know if it's, it's just a lot of the presentation about attacking parts of humanity that's going on right now because we have kind of uh, the whole Logan Paul nonsense and, and fallout from that where people are uh, divorcing humanity from the people that they are targeting for entertainment's sake. Maybe it's just that kind of vibe. And we were talking in the in the podcast group how how this week is very much about bringing love to the table. And quite often in January you can only get a self-love vibe and everybody will be on the self-love vibe come February you watch but for me this kind of week has been more about like kind of what you put out there like and rather than go looking for an idealized spirituality in yourself and in other people it's more about getting back to just being human with other people like showing basic kindness courtesy decency and love and like embodying that when it comes to, okay, uh, so Nathan says, could you please give an example or situation of idealized spirituality? I don't quite understand. Okay, so idealized spirituality is when we're expecting spirituality to look a certain way. So, for example, we've all seen the pictures of kind of like the new age yoga lifestyle and you think that by getting into a a spiritual mindset, suddenly, you know, you're going to be your life is going to be like it looks in the pictures. I'm not a big fan of like the whole, I've been calling it like Instagram witchcraft, which is a little bit unfair on Instagram, but basically that presents an idealized view of spirituality because you only see like these perfectly put together pictures. And we've all seen like the people who are in elaborate yoga poses. We've seen people who are um, present a perfect picture of their altar and it's not a mess and there's nothing going you know there's nothing not a hair out of place um we see an idealized spirituality i mean we've all seen the people with like you know, um, tarot cards and they look like they're having an orgasm to sell something and that's not necessarily what spirituality very rarely is not orgasms because you know go for it but it's it's like this ah by the by this um, and really tarot and all forms of spirituality for me is kind of like digging deeper into the self, digging into the parts of the self, kind of like trying to figure out who we are. And spirituality can be messy. 
you can have like the lighter bits, the fun bits, the silly bits, the, the presentable bits, but like, it's kind of like a, uh, a follow on from what I've been talking about, about, you know, um, break the mold and then break the mold. Um, and it's kind of like still going on in my mindset where by now it's kind of like, I've noticed this kind of like a removal of humanity a little bit from the spirituality because it's becoming, um, very idealized. It's, 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 and if you don't look like that, then, then somehow you're less spiritual is kind of like the vibe that comes off it. And I was thinking about this in terms of like the grander energies that are going around where like different cultures aren't being respected. There's been like arguments in, in spiritual circles that I don't give a fuck about this, com this community of other people. So I don't care about the situation in general. And that left me like beating my head against a wall. Um, like we are all human beings. Like disrespecting each other's cultures isn't going to lead us anywhere, but into trouble. And it kind of divorces the humanity from people and culture and things like that do generally sweep into spirituality. Um, you get arguments about culture and whether people are allowed to do this, that and the other within spirituality and it, it becomes problematic. Um, I've seen this firsthand. Like I've been told I'm not allowed to follow the Morrigan because I'm not Irish. <laughs> and and so for me, and I'm like, geez, how, how does it, how do you even get into that kind of conversation? And for me, it's like, well, firstly, well, uh, I have Irish heritage in my, in my immediate bloodline. I'm half Welsh who were also Celts. Um, and apart from anything, past lives, surely. <laughs> If reincarnation is a thing, if we believe in reincarnation, then we don't know who we've been. It's all just, anyway, to me, it's all just, you know, uh, shells that we wear to experience life in many different facets and get a different feel for all the different aspects of humanity, which is far too vast and expansive to ever experience in one go. And that's kind of how I feel about it. And so that kind of, idealized spirituality is another form um, that divorces the humanity from things like you have to be a certain way to, in order to be spiritual and that can descend into really troubling things like you can get kind of like a uh, a racism that comes in you can get the homophobia that comes in I've dealt with that and talked about that on the channel before because um, I you know I've had young men being told that they can't follow the mark again because they were gay and I was like fuck this shit dudes i mean who is telling people like they can't because they're this that and the other it drives me crazy so victoria says i've been told that i wasn't spiritually in a good place because i'm overweight and have chronic pain and if i found true spiritual balance then i wouldn't have these problems holy fuck buckets dude okay that's spiritual bypassing and uh spiritual shaming which I might actually change change the name of this video to that because that is horrendous. If you, you're not in a good spiritual place because you're overweight and have chronic pain. Okay. Spirituality is not a contest. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're a yogi with a skinny little body type unless that's who you are. Like <laughs> there is no judgment if that's who you are, but there shouldn't be a judgment if that's not who you are either. Uh, you were told you were too fat to worship the Morrigan. Holy crap. <laughs> okay. So I'm dealing with physical body issues and trying to get in shape myself. You can't probably can't tell from the, from this angle. Um, maybe you can, I don't know. Um, but I'm certainly not in uh, a great, a good deal of shape and the <laughs> rounds of shape. Right. Um, and this is like an ongoing thing for me that's it's come about because of depression it's come about because of abuse and like comfy eating is a thing um i'm going to talk a little bit about body shape because seeing as two people have uh, you know immediately said that they've had that problem you're fat so you cannot do spellcraft because it won't work <laughs> you're, you're too fat to do spell what what planet are people on? You're uh, okay. 
Okay, right. First and foremost, there are lots of different types of body shape and some people are very healthy, very fit at certain sizes and some people are not. The idea that skinny is necessarily healthy is not right. Like a lot of people who get to the very skinny are like harming themselves to get to that point. Um, they're, they're not eating properly, they're not eating a balanced diet, etc. So like physical size is on a ratio people apply these generalized standards to people men and women about what the body should look like and the truth is it's again an individual expression of self i'm an hourglass shape which is like the classic 50 shape so even if i lost like a lot of weight i wouldn't look like a, a rake and i'm never going to look like that so that's just how my body is is formed now in terms of magic, there is an argument that like keeping your body healthy, treating your body like a temple, giving it good fuel will help your energetic uh, kind of vibration. And I think it's true that we know that certain foods make us feel sluggish and, and make us feel uncomfortable and like some of us can't drink certain things. Um, I have trouble with certain foods uh, that set off my IBS. and. I know that if I eat them, my energy levels dip. But even if I had dipped energy levels, I can still perform magic just fine. Thank you very much. Um, there is nothing stopping anybody performing any kinds of magic. To be honest, people who are pushing that shit around are basically trying to take away from your personal power. Again, they're divorcing humanity from you. They're making out that uh, you're somehow less valuable than them because of your body shape, your weight, your size, or, or your physical pain and such. Um, working with the Morrigan in particular, uh, there are quite a few people who go through battles of their own, and sometimes that is about physical chronic pain. Like a lot of people I know who are spiritual have turned to spirituality because they struggled in one way or another. And sometimes that is embodied in a physical ailment, in a physical condition, etc. Saying people can't work with the Morrigan because they're overweight. Like, I really wish I knew who these people were because I would seriously go take a stick. <laughs> like, how is that helpful? You're too fat to. So, so far, we've had too fat to worship the Morrigan, too, uh, too non Irish to work with the Morrigan, too. Uh, I, I know people who, you know, they're homosexual, so they're not allowed and think that they've been told that by people. Who is Is it the same person? Is it just one really bad apple somewhere telling people they can't work with the Morrigan for different reasons? Because. <laughs> I would be I would be interested to see if it was one person or the same group of people telling people this shit. So strength comes in a number of different ways. And with the Celts, for example, there were different uh, strands of life. So you would have the bards and guess what they did? Um, you have the druids, you have the warriors um, and you know, you have farmers and things, but they tend to be a little bit more warlike. <laughs> I think it might be just one really angry individual who maybe needs a hug or something that is going around telling people they can't work with a Morrigan. <laughs> because the Mor apart from anything, the Morrigan chooses who she works with. And uh, <laughs> if you, you, you're arguing with the Morrigan, good luck with that. Okay. Um, so... In the Celtic walk of life, that if, if we have to do this, because like I'm a big I'm a big 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 supporter of evolutionary spirituality. Um, like we're not ancient Celts, so we don't need to live like them, guys. Come on, um, like we can we can honor the memory, we can honor the journey, we can honor the mythology, but we don't have to be them. We're, we're not them. We're living in this time period. There's a reason. Um, anyway. If we want to go from that, there's all different kinds of ways of life of follow, following and worshipping gods. So, you know, singing does not require you to be um, an athlete. So the kind of the, the bard lifestyle with the singing and the voice and the, the recording of history and the passing down of wisdom doesn't require that. The kind of druidic uh, lifestyle doesn't particularly require that either. Um, if you were running about on a battlefield, yeah, maybe. Now, bearing in mind the Celts won't have lived as long as we did. 
apart from anything. Um, they wouldn't have been living in the same lifestyle as us. Uh, we live in houses. Um, everything is very different. Uh, the, the, the internet, <laughs> the way that we gather food, everything is hugely different and kind of like you can't really make that parallel saying that, you know, you have to be a certain way to follow the Morrigan. Apart from anything, the goddess Morrigan, this is not how I intended this video to go, but we're going to address it because this is crazy. Um, the goddess Morrigan is a shapeshifter. The goddess Morrigan is, as far as I'm concerned, she's primal. Uh, she is encompassing. She's vast. She cannot be contained in a box. And I've said before, like the minute you think you've got a handle on what the Morrigan is, she'll shapeshift and be like, right, keep up. Um, and I've had many experiences which the Morrigan plays with the idea of perception. So she'll appear in meditation in different guises. She'll, she's appeared before just looking completely not herself. I've had, the, you know, the first time I ever saw the Morrigan, like this, I've tell a lot of people, she was kind of, she looked like a guy. I thought it was a male. There was a very deep voice. The head, face was covered. The cloak was in such a way to make her look very, very broad. Um, and the voice was deepened to how I normally hear her now. Um, and so she presented herself as masculine when I first saw her. And I thought it was a messenger of the Morrigan. And it was one of those first lessons like, no, this is the Morrigan. The, the Morrigan will present herself. The Morrigan will play with fluidity is, is what I'm getting. And if you think that you can, you can sort of basically tell her what she is, good luck to you. In fact, I, I tend to uh, feel like the people who would say what the Morrigan is and is not don't really understand. Um, that to me speaks of a lack of connection. I'm never going to tell someone they do or don't have a connection because it isn't my place. But that makes me raise my eyebrow and go, Hmm. Um, so the Morrigan shapeshifts in energy wise anyway. She presents different energies to different people. She looks at people for, for their value. And I think maybe um, that's the problem is that people who want to work with the Morrigan or who do work with the Morrigan place a lot of their value in this relationship. I know it's important to me and I'm not saying it's a bad thing to, you know, be proud of one's relationship with their deity, the Morrigan or otherwise. I think the th problem comes is when people start to defining themselves by that and nothing else. And again, this is an idealized form of spirituality. Well, if you work with the Morrigan, you're clearly going to be, I don't know, cosplaying warrior or something. Um, and, you know, the problem is, is that we don't really have outside of the military. We don't have, or maybe the police force, we don't have that kind of, warrior element within society anymore the same way the Celts did. For the Celts, it's just a matter of life. It was just daily a matter of life that at any given point there could be raids, skirmishes and full on battles. It was just life back then. Um, for, for us now, it's, it's not uh, like, I mean, we can go and we can get trained. We can go and we can get self-defense training. We can um, actively seek out like a physical activity around that kind of warrior feel but it's something that we actively seek out and find rather than it just being naturally part of who we are since birth and i imagine that the celts would like train from a you know from from childhood from very early childhood everybody would probably train um and and then there was more of a division within the the stratas of society later on so to to suggest that you know you have to be one certain physical way in order to be a follower of the morrigan is problematic for me um it, it divorces humanity again it's, it's kind of like are these people feeling like this is their idealized spirituality and therefore nobody else can be following the morrigan if they're not following the exact same way that they've been presented spirituality i think we get lost in paganism in general because it means so much to us but it's also very much self-defined a lot of the time in paganism it's not always the case um but experience uh which is very very real to us and then people forget the fact that just because it's something is presented as very real through our lens of experience doesn't mean that that's exactly how someone else is going to experience it we're like oh right for us is just right full stop 
and that's not the case. I think uh, what is right for us is what it's meant to come through for us. It's the way that we're meant to experience it. It's the way that our lives, our histories, our cultures, our societies, our way of thinking, everything comes together in a moment and we see things through a particular lens. And so that to us then integrates. We take what works for us and we build on that and we build a spiritual mindset, a spiritual life. Um, but the problem comes is when we're not allowing other people their experiences, I think. And if we get too much into that, we get more into like a dogmatic religion like the other religions. And by the way, the other religions are not doing so well. Um, like people are moving away from that all the time. And whereas paganism is, is continued to rise. And I think the individual expression, the escape from the rules and regulations and the dogma is, is kind of what attracts people to paganism in the first place, that you can bring who you are to the table. And I was talking in, uh, the blog post about tribe, about how I felt that soul tribe was so different from the usual group dynamics because it allowed people to be who they were. And if we take an expectation of who people should be or even who they are, we think they are um, and kind of like place that on their head it kind of doesn't allow them to be who they really truly are and it divorces humanity from them and that's very true i think when we're talking about spirituality in terms of following the morrigan that people think that you must be x y and z in order to follow the morrigan i've had so many people say like they look at my face and they expect me not to know what I'm talking about. They look at my face and they're expecting me to be kind of, I don't know, uh, like airy, airheady kind of thing. Um, and then I've surprised most people. Some people take serious issue with me um, following the Morrigan and um, working with the Morrigan. But what has come to me, and I think this is the best advice I can give anybody who hears this, is uh, be so sure in your devotion in your relationship with your gods that nobody else really gets a say and that's how I've always felt about my relationship with the Mario and like I know how real how tangible <coughs> how life-altering my relationship with the goddess Morrigan is and because my relationship with the Morrigan is so firm uh, is so deep for me and means so much to me Nobody coming in and telling me that I don't work with the Morrigan matters to me because that's to me it's like what do you know? <laughs> like really, what do you know? Like the people that come in and tell you that you don't work with a particular deity, if you believe and you felt it and you've seen it and it makes sense to you and you've experienced it, nobody coming in from the outside who hasn't lived your life and experienced your feelings and your emotions and the life that you've lived and the things that you've seen and the meditations that you've experienced and so on and so forth. Nobody can come out and kind of like tell you that you haven't had those experiences. Nobody gets to speak on behalf of the God or gods in, in the capacity of you are not allowed. Like who, who do humans think they are to say that the gods will be told who they can and cannot work with? <laughs> The, it's it's a really strange thing that happens where that people think that they can dictate who the gods work with i'm not i'm not sure where it comes from um i think that people want their exclusivity because it makes them feel special i think maybe that is one root of it i think that the more people who are coming and paying attention and are interested and are wanting information and people are like, well, it dilutes the pool. And it's basically a racist argument, but in terms of spirituality. And it's not a good one. It's like, <sighs> I mean, you can put in place real conversations to really teach people about uh, what you feel the gods and, and the goddesses are. You can put in place uh, kind of like an onus on doing the work, on deepening the connection, on reading the mythology and stressing the importance of things that you feel preserve the energy on the vibration and things that matter to the, the gods. So if you feel that the mythology is very important, then you present it and you explore it and you, you know, you make that available for people and you encourage people. Um, and I, I encourage people all the time to read the mythology and I'm like I think mythology for me is a very good place to begin 
but it's not the be all and end all for me because uh, personal gnosis, evolution of spirituality is just as important. And sadly, I've come under, under fire for thinking this way. Um, and I just wait a little bit and the people who are uh, trying to demean me for using personal gnosis then present uh, their work of personal gnosis for consideration, their poetry, uh, their whatever after digging at mine. And that tends to be the case that if you wait a minute, people will show their ass. So how exactly do we recognize or identify when we are idealizing our own forms of spirituality? What are the warning signs? I think it's basically living it. I think there is no way other than living it um, because a lot of us get to the point where we feel disappointed about something to do with spirituality. We were, ex we were expecting something to look or feel a certain way and it didn't happen. Maybe it's the first time your ritual isn't as full on as you'd expected. Maybe uh, the spell didn't work out the, the way that you had hoped. Maybe you're connecting with people and you're not ex they're not the person you thought they might be or expecting them to be and we're not allowing them to be human. And basically, I think the thing that I try to do, and we all slip up on this, seriously, we all do it, um, is get away from the idealization. So allow people to be human, allow people to fall down, allow people to be failing, allow people to have, you know, bad reactions to things. That's not to say that you have to be anybody's punching bag because you absolutely don't. You can, you know, put your borders down in the sand and say this is not on. Um, we're going to... We're going to create a safe space for our own spirituality at the same time as respecting other people's right for spirituality. And I think we have to be very careful with expectation is, is, is what I think a warning sign is. Um, and we can get into the point of, oh, this is going to change my whole life just from this one thing. And usually the only thing that really changes your life is ongoing work, which is never the fun answer that people are wanting, but um, it's just kind of what it is. Spirituality is a lot of things. It's a calling, it's uh, a wondrousness, it's a, ma it's a magic, but it's also work. And it's it's carrying on doing it when we don't feel like doing it. It's, it's carrying on our dedications, our promises, our guides, our rituals, all of that, even then we don't feel like it very much. So, also, when we are limiting other people, I think is a warning sign for um, idealizing our own spirituality. And a lot of pagans do this in terms of like getting at other religions, although plenty of people get on at other pagans as well. Like We can allow Christians to have their own path as long as they're not coming after us, which is when we have to act and be like, this is our safe space, we can allow other people to have their spiritual beliefs. Uh, we can talk out about the abuses of all spiritual beliefs, including our own, and we can lead by example. So those are some of the different ways that I would suggest about being careful about idealizing spirituality. And uh, I don't think any one thing ever has the answer. Like there, there is no one God that has all the answers. There is no one spiritual path that has all the answers. There is no one way to follow a particular deity that has the right and wrong. You know, there's no one anything as far as I'm concerned. There is just expressions and experiences and the individual importance that is placed on that. So... <laughs> This this took a very roundabout turn. I had this very strong plan in mind, and we ended up talking about uh, the Morrigan more than I had anticipated. With all the different systems of witchcraft out there, how do you as an independent witch keep dogma out of your own practices? Seeing as how lots of people now think witchcraft as a religion in so many parts of the world, Wayland. Um, hmm. Interesting. I think that the difference between appreciating and incorporating a particular system of witchcraft and then dogmatic um, adherence to said path is where the line is there. So I think for me, and again, you know, I'm, I'm expressing how I feel about it and how I follow it, and we can only lead by example because the problem comes when we're like, reaching outside of ourselves and telling other people how to live. 
because the only person who we have any control over is ourselves and the only person we should want any control over is ourselves so when different systems of witchcraft are becoming uh, dogmatic to your peripheral that's probably a good sign that that's not somewhere that you want to be um, and there is a value as well in taking the information without getting entrenched in the politics of a particular sect, a particular group of people. This is something I had to learn to do, uh, which was to divorce good information from the authors sometimes. And uh, when we found out that the, the the authors were not who we hoped them to be, Idealized Spirituality 101, um, don't put anyone on a pedestal. Don't put anybody on a pedestal. So I think, I don't think, I don't know that I would call witchcraft a religion. I think witchcraft is the practice. Um, I think there are a lot of spiritualities that, that could be classified as religion that go alongside with it. Again, religion is one of these loaded words and I'm not big into defining things anyway. I prefer a kind of flux kind of thinking. I think that the more we try and put things in a box and say this is a religion or not, um, the further away we get from what matters, which is the practice, which is the depth, which is the emotion behind it. And so that's how I feel about that particular subject. I hope I answered that sufficiently. It's a vast one. So, I mean, there are some people who are dead against kind of an eclecticism. They, they feel like, you know, you're watering down things. Again, what is to be watered down? Because this is something that has uh, keeps popping up in my line of thought. Like people want thinking that you can water down spirituality. Well, surely you can't. Surely spirituality is a vast pool of endless knowledge, of endless divinity that we can keep delving in time and time again like there is no like sand at the bottom there's just depth it's like our own oceans we can keep diving and diving and diving and there's a vast ocean down there that we haven't explored yet so how can we tap out spirituality like how can we um water down things and i think the kind of the watering down thing it feeds into like your racist arguments it feeds into your um us versus them arguments and it is just used from an ego point of view to say these people aren't allowed to do what I do because I do it because this and it becomes like this circular argument with people that really doesn't help anything it doesn't you know unite us as people and I was saying in my in my uh, <laughs> in my tribe post I was like firstly I think we're all one tribe so before I even start discussing this I'm kind of like saying that you know underneath it all I feel like we are all one tribe that we are all experiencing deity and there is no right or wrong way to do that um, I don't feel that there's one there should ever be one religion or one spiritual path because humans are hugely vast hugely expansive hugely incomprehensible sometimes and if we're that way then deity must be that way quadrupled and then some you know um because we are only understanding what we can understand through the human lens of concept like i've talked about it in terms of you know the little dragon cr crystals the dragon stone crystals um and you can get like the you can see in the top they're kind of frosted underneath those ones i've talked about spirituality like that or like again light over the ocean that we see things light over the ocean over the ocean waves and we see the top we see the ripples and we see down away but we don't see what's right down there that's what i feel like spirituality is like a bottomless depth so i don't feel like we can water it down i don't feel like we can ever get one answer and i think the human need to be finite is a problem <laughs> like the, the human need for like a finite answer is not something i can ever get behind it's probably why i don't like maths very much because i'm like no you know. <laughs> maths <laughs> i i was always much more of a fan of like the exploration the the delving the the, the differences the comparison the interplay between different elements that kind of feel of like that that flux vibe that makes me move so i don't feel like there is one idealized spirituality i feel like there are just expressions of humanity and the more that we honor 
different expressions of humanity, the closer to deity we're actually getting because we're honoring the deity in you and the deity in me. Because the concept to me is that we all contain that spark of, of deity, that, that something else, that soul. You know, we all have it. What we choose to do with it is something else. But every single person on the planet has that spark. And some we connect with, some we jive with, some we love, some we don't. There's no right and wrong answers. It's just expression. It's just different ways of experiencing life. And so for me, there is no ideal. There simply is. And that's why I try and I've been trying for months to be like, it's okay for spirituality to be messy. In fact, I would say it's probably necessary for it to be messy sometimes because spirituality is supposed to be defining but not expansive. Uh, it's supposed to be like getting to the best version of yourself. It's supposed to be like unlearning the things that you've been taught which hold you down hold you back stop you from growing working on your mindset dealing with your shadows and that is, to me is what spirituality is so victoria says i think unfortunately there are some people who think that when you become enlightened all your problems go away once you found your god or goddess then life will become happiness without any difficult situation and they present their perfect life on social media and within those communities there is a lot of judgment with those who are working with deity but still okay working with the goddess morrigan the morrigan will fuck your life up on purpose <laughs> Like she will, she will test you and test you some more and then throw you another curveball, and it will keep being like that. So working with the Morrigan and other goddesses of her ilk is often about the, the growth. And to me, spirituality doesn't have an end point. There isn't a perfect life. There, it's, it's just nonsense that gets presented. And honestly, I feel like the people who need to present them their perfect spirituality their perfect life whatever on instagram or social media or whatever it might be it's because they're feeling a loss of something they're not they're feeling a lack of something and so they're presenting an image of something which they wish their life felt like but i'm gonna say that nine times out of ten presenting the perfect life on the forefront is not even tip of the iceberg style stuff about what's going on underneath um i feel like a lot of the time this kind of this presentation um, is there to sell something and it might not even be like a, a sale of a product or a service it can just be to sell an idea like that the witchcraft is perfect and witchcraft looks like this and witchcraft is great and witchcraft is always being out in nature i'm always out in nature guys i'm always near a tree i wish i was i'm not I work on a computer, I'm trying to get the store up and running, I've been staring at a screen for three days straight and it drove me stir crazy to the point where I got out today in the rain and saw some crows and it was like this moment of happy, pure bubbling over happiness because I've not been able to do it for three days. That's the truth of it. And the idea that this presentation of this perfect spiritual life which we can then look down on others for not having is usually a a fake concept to begin with and b is just like a mechanism in order to like make the self feel better and unfortunately some people make themselves feel better by making other people feel less that to me is a problem within humanity full stop um it happens in spirituality as well spirituality is kind of like an easy an easy thing for people to kind of like value judge about and um to get on the high horse because it's very difficult for people to be and yet people do it but it's very difficult for people to be like um argue with somebody's spiritual life because a lot of spirituality is behind closed doors so only we really know what we're doing what we're getting from it so by presenting the real witch argument um which chris knows all about by it's a, then a way to demean what everyone else is doing and make out that we're the only expert and it's nonsense it's absolutely nonsense uh violet says working with the hecate is very much like working with the morrigan it's one curveball after another I often wonder how much of spirituality is is uh, meant to challenge us really like I think that human beings need the challenge to grow because if we say we've reached it then we become complacent and we don't keep trying to improve like complacency is an apathy a kind of like the death of spirituality to me um, the idea that we have reached the pinnacle of our ascent 
and we're done now is problematic to me because then life is the journey life is life is the ascension life is the growth life is the adventure life is the the drive to seek when we stop seeking when we stop being driven we're giving up on parts of ourselves because we can always keep going we can always keep improving there are always things to learn there's more to learn than one lifetime will ever allow like i get moments where i'm like that about um everything because i'm like there are some things in life i need to drink of this water because i'm <laughs> i talk for way longer than i was anticipating there are some things in life that i may well never understand <clears throat> so sometimes i look at like the behind the scenes footage on like how they make movies and i'm like that's insane and all this different detail and the modeling and the way they they model like masks and things to look like orcs and i may never ever understand a, a an nth degree of, of that process and that's one tiny facet of like life that's why we specialize in jobs because there is too much information even even if we become proficient at something say like for basic sake let's say it's a job there's always going to be updates to the methods. There's always going to be new ways of learning. There's always going to be new technologies to help us improve and keeping ourselves up to date and re having refresher courses and things is kind of like expected. Um, so if that's true with just that, you can imagine why would we ever think we were done with spirituality? Uh, Mira says, I love how others have started looking down at people that work with Hecate because now we are basic. I think the thing with working with different gods and goddesses is that they go through cycles of popularity, um, particularly in social circles. Um, the Morrigan has been through one. Uh, Hell is going through one right now. Um, there's been a call again to kind of like the Dianic witchcraft of late there i've seen a little bit more of that recently um, and people just go through cycles of these things and then people will use any excuse to judge other people so there you go ian says that innovation of the practice from people who are practicing today is so important for me and allowing for the new and unseen absolutely um i am a big fan like i said of evolutionary witchcraft i think as we evolve together as we learn together we adapt together and we grow we we grow and uh as a human race we have a long 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 way to go um we're no by no means perfect like we haven't even learned to live in harmony with the planet like we've got further and further away from living in harmony with the planet never mind each other so there's, these are some goals that i think matter to me as a human never mind as a spiritual person um because we're all interconnected as far as i'm concerned like when there is no separation like as much as people wish there were sometimes i think for me there is no separation and therefore the kind of like the consciousness and and like living in harmony with the world around us and learning to do that is a, is that's the direction we want to go and recently we've been going the wrong freaking way uh waylon i think if the gods worked i worked with made life a blissful ball of happiness um, with no trials, I would be scared out of my mind. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Nothing truly worth having in this life is for free. I think that's the human mindset. I think humans enjoy things much more and get much more of a value out of things that they've worked for. And you can see this in something as basic as the people who have um, built up a business, they've, they've worked for it, they've gone through sleepless nights, they've gone through all the doubt, the, the trial, they've screaming, the crime, the, the difficulty, and then they, they flourish from it because they won't give up on something versus the people who inherit things. I think that the, the human mindset of what's worth fighting for is very interesting. And seeing as we already touched on the Morrigan, that's a more organic thing that, that, you know, what we are fighting for is what makes us a warrior. Because a warrior is a kind of a lifestyle and it's much more of a archetype these days than it is a reality for a lot of people. Uh, military and police force, etc 
are very separate. They have a very real warfare uh, experience that a lot of people are likely never to have. But that doesn't make people less of a warrior for the trials and wars that they've been through. It's just, it's just different, to be honest. So... Yeah, I think a lot of human beings would freak out. And, and there's been so much literature about like people providing the perfect world and human beings just wake up from it. It's like Matrix style. They said that the first Matrix was a Eden and people kept waking up because they didn't believe it. So cynicism is a human trait. <laughs> but there's also like a value system. There's a, there's a value in the, the overcoming of things. And that's just, I think, the way humans are built. Like we... We see, at, um, Joanna DeVoe said the other day, like nature is the template. And that resonates with me very strongly. Um, and, you know, the template in nature is like the birth and uh, the, 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 the cracking open of an egg, the cracking open of a seed, the pushing our way out, and then the slow growth. And not everybody makes it. Um, not all life makes it. And there is a constant cycle of life and death within each other. Again, for me, there is no separation. And then things grow and things die off. And that's just the, within nature. And I think that that's human beings following that, right? This thing is part of my life and I'm breaking through and I'm growing and I'm learning and I'm pulling in the nutrients to learn this thing and I'm growing and, and then it dies off. And that's just mortality. And, experiencing mortality i think because if the soul is immortal um, and experiences all these different shades of mortality in order to experience all the different facets that life has to offer what happens then i can't say because we're all guessing at that point um but that makes more sense to me like the the, the, the following the cycles that we see around us growing and, and learning as a soul. Well, it says, I'm not a witch, nor have I ever considered myself one, however my wife is. And since the day of meeting her, I've seen a lot of what witches truly have to confront in this world, everything from being judged on looks and the gods they work with, how much money and success they have. Um, and so his heart goes out to us all. Yeah, there, <laughs> there is a lot of a value judgment going on in the world. <laughs> it's a sad detrimental part of life unfortunately and i think the best way is to lead by example with that all right we're at 47 minutes wow this is this is my problem with live streaming <laughs> i'm like i will do a nice quick 15 minute live stream 47 minutes later that's what happens so thank you guys for joining me I'm going to pop this up on, on YouTube. So if you watched some of it and couldn't bear to look at my face for 47 minutes, I understand. <laughs> um, but I will download this afterwards. I will leave it up. I will pop it over on uh, here and on Story Suppliers. I'll pop it up on the YouTube channel. So it'll be there later if you guys want to uh, rewatch it. If you have any more questions, if you want me to answer anything that I didn't answer in this video, you want another video, <laughs> another 47 minutes of me rambling on, we can do that um so just let me know send me a message say i have a question about this can you make a video please and i'll be like yes <laughs> but i am in the middle of moving the store and writing a book and getting everything done so it might take me a minute but i'll do my best because i'm a crazy person taking on all the projects at once right so much love to everybody stay fluxy and i hope you're having a great week many blessings <laughs>